the consultations further with the Honorable Minister and his team. Thank you very much. Your release and clerk, can we proceed? Thank you. Final set, question for oral answers. The Honorable Minister for Foreign Affairs, International Cooperation, and Gambians Abroad. Thank you very much. Questions for which two notices were given to the Honorable Minister for Foreign Affairs, International Cooperation, and Gambians Abroad by Honorable Members for oral reply. We start with the March questions, question number 173 of 2020 by the Honorable Member for... Yes, 73 of 20... Oh, 73, sorry. Question 73 of 2020 by the Honorable Member for Birkama North. I understand he's out, but he has delegated and given authority for the Honorable Member for Birkama South to read his questions. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Um, sure. Honorable Speaker, it has been reported in a media publication on the 28th November 2018 that the German interior minister did say that there was 2,500 Gambian refugees who, whose asylum cases had been rejected and were already identified for deportation. Can the Honorable Minister for Foreign Affairs confirm this trend of deportation and the current situation surrounding the Gambian refugees in German as well as the position of the Gambian government to that effect? Thank you. Honorable Speaker, members may recall a joint delegation comprising officials of my ministry and some members of the Select Committee on Foreign Affairs who embarked on a fact-finding mission to the Federal Republic of Germany from the 9th to the 16th of February 2020 on matters of irregular migration with relevant German authorities. The delegation was informed by the German Ministry of Interior that there were 15,534 Gambians residing in Germany. And as of 31st of December 2019, out of this number, 4,837 are required to leave Germany. 4,271 Gambians have their deportation temporarily suspended. 1,133 have applied for asylum. 330 asylum applications are currently being processed by the Federal Office for Migration and Refugees. 4,868 are under appeal before the German courts. At the state level of Baden-Württemberg, the Gambian delegation was informed that 25 Gambians have been convicted of criminal offenses. Following the return of the delegation, a comprehensive report was prepared and submitted to the Office of the President. The delegation also had a meeting with the President to further brief him on the conclusion of the visit. Acting on the recommendation of the report, 
The Office of the President assigned the Minister of Foreign Affairs to work with all relevant stakeholders to develop a memorandum of understanding in the area of migration between the Gambia and the Federal Republic of Germany. Consequently, a draft MOU was developed and circulated to relevant stakeholders. Once this process is completed, the document will be presented to the relevant German authorities to kickstart negotiation on the proposed MOU. Honorable member for Burkina South, you want any clarification? Yeah. Yes. Um, you can ask a supplementary question to clarify. Yeah. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. And I want to seize this opportunity to thank your able ministry with the effort done to this effect. Um, how soon do we expect this memorandum of, understa uh, memorandum of understanding to be ready and uh, be signed between the two countries? We've been working closely with the Select Committee on Foreign Relations, and we've gone very far, and we've decided to include other stakeholders that is the Minister of Interior, the Office of the Vice President, and the Minister of Justice. And as we speak, we've got received feedback from the Office of the President, and uh, I think soon we'll finalize it. I cannot give you a timeline, but I think we are moving pretty fast. We had a very good meeting with the Seller Committee on Foreign Relations. Kamasa, you have yes. another Up, chance. Upon arrival um, from your tour with the relevant select committee for foreign affairs, did you receive any deportation from Germany by uh, the Gambian asylum seekers? Well, I was not part of the delegation. Two staff of my ministry were part of the delegation. But since they returned, we have not received any uh, Gambians deported from Germany. But that is also due to uh, the fact that we had a, morat well, a moratorium on, uh, uh, in place and we were negotiating some term terms and conditions for accepting deportees. And uh, of recently, during the COVID period, of course, we received a notification from the German authorities wanting to deport some people. We, we refused due to the fact that during this period, it's not even prudent to engage in such, such operation. Thank you very much. Central Badibu. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Minister, would you like to tell the House whether those, um, the referred 2,500 2, governments, whether they are in safe condition? Are they in the camps or they are on their own? Well, it would be difficult for me to, and I, I'm sure all of them are not in camps. And uh, the, those who went to Germany maybe are in a better position to tell me whether they're in camps or not. But I, for certain, I, I was in Germany prior to that. I know that the Gambian Association there uh, is very active, engaging them. And from my understanding, I don't think most of them are in, in camps. I stand to be corrected by those who went to Germany. You can liaise with members of the delegation from this August body who went to Germany. Thank you. Um, Wooly West. Uh, no, no. If Supplement his information. Supplementary question, yes. Supplement his information. <laughs> Any more supplementary questions from honorable members? Yes, Loa Nyomi. Uh, Madam Speaker, a good lot of deportees usually arrive in chains. Is, what is your ministry doing, or what does your ministry intend to do to address this concern with regards to the integrity of the Gambia? and your office? Well, I, I think it's a matter of concern, and in all our negotiations, we'll make sure that if people are deported, they are, it's done in a very dignified manner. Proceed with question number 74 of 2020 by the Honorable Member for Kiang Central. 74. Honorable Speaker, 
Can the Honorable Minister for Foreign Affairs, International Cooperation, and Gambians Abroad tell this assembly the level of investigation into the diplomatic passport sack? Honorable Speaker, the Minister of Foreign Affairs is not privy to the content of the investigation report into the passport scandal. However, we have been reliably informed by the Minister of Justice that the investigation has been completed and those persons found culpable have been charged. The case is proceeding at the High Court. Thank you. I don't think there's need for any, especially when the matter is before the courts. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. We move over to question number 75 of 2020 by the Honorable Member for Busumbala. I understand he's giving authority to Olyundung, Honorable Member for Olyundung, to read his questions. Thank you so much, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, Somaliland is one of the, one of the peaceful countries in, in, in East Africa. It gained uh, independence from the Great Britain on the 26th of June, 1960, but denied of their rights to be recognized by the international community. Would the Honorable Minister for Foreign Affairs indicate to this August Assembly the position of the government of the Gambia on Somaliland? Honorable Speaker, the government of the Gambia has only granted recognition to the Republic of, Federal Republic of Somalia. As a government, there are common positions in the international system to which we align ourselves. And given that the African Union and the United Nations have accorded recognition to only the Federal Republic of Somalia, we as a country shall abide by that. Moreover, the entity of Somaliland is not recognized by the United Nations. Yes. Honorable Minister, are you aware that the AU fact finding mission report conducted between April 30 to 4 May 2005, which have highlighted tangible reasons and recommendations for the AU to, took, to, to look into the matter of Somaliland? And as a government and a member of the bloc, our sovereignty. Uh, uh, what, what, what plans do you have as a, as a government to look into the matter of Somaliland in the recognition process? The issue of Somaliland, as far as the government of the Gambia is concerned, it's an internal problem. And the discussion will be held between Somali. Yes. Uh, Honorable Minister, I understand very well. What I'm saying is, as a sovereign state, Looking at the report being produced by the African Union as a country, can we take up the challenge to champion the negotiation between Somalia and Somaliland? I think their neighbors are looking into that. You have the Prime Minister of Ethiopia and uh, their neighboring people within their region who are taking care of that. And if there is any party that is better placed to negotiate that, I think the African Union will invite that party to come in. But as of now, it's not in our strategic interest to get involved in that discussion. Honorable Member for Woolly West. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Minister, is Somaliland that he is talking about recognized by AU? Did not get the response. No, the Somaliland is not recognized by AU by any African. There is no African country that has given recognition to Somaliland. Yes, um, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Would the Honorable Minister confirm, as the Minister responsible for Foreign Affairs, whether there is any discussion that you are aware of at the level of the AU related to Somaliland? Are you aware of any discussion um, in relation to Somaliland? During all the meetings of the African Union that I attended, and as a PR also in New York, and I had the privilege to chair the group several times, the issue of Somaliland was never a part of our agenda. Thank you. Um, Central Badibu. Thank you, Honorable 
Speaker and the Honourable Minister, I think your response are welcome. But Honourable Minister, um, I could fully remember Gambia was championing the cause of Taiwan in the UN. So is it possible for us to also start seeing how to consider our fellow Africans who have been denied uh, of recognition? Is there any possible way of you know, starting to see how to champion their cause? You know, that was a strategic mistake of championing the cause of that country. And I don't think we, history will judge us favorably if we start embarking on such a journey. I think it will be very irresponsible on the part of the government to talk about this issue. Come south. Thank you very much, uh, Madam, uh, Madam Speaker. Honorable Minister, um, during the AU summits you have been attending as the foreign minister, are you aware of any formal request from the Somaliland government regarding their issue between them and the Somalia? Not even once. And I told you at the level of the UN also, I've never heard about the issue of Somaliland. It's only here that it's being discussed. I don't know for whatever reasons, but I think we should be very careful with who we engage with as a country, especially as a, a member of FOSS, the Forum of Small States. We have to be very, very careful. Yes, Uli East. Honorable Speaker, um, is it wise for this National Assembly to start engaging Somalia when your government has not in any way been involved with Somalia. Is it advisable? I, I think I made it clear. It will be very irresponsible on our side to engage with Somalia. And as we speak, today is the National Day of uh, Somalia, the Federal Republic of Somalia. And if you have the chance, you can read through the, some of the stories of the BBC and those who can read French on RFI, and you'll have a better understanding on, of what is going on there. Thank you. We move over then to question number 136 of 2020. That's the June questions, honorable member for Banjul South. 136. Thank you very much. Honorable Speaker, can the Honorable Minister for Foreign Affairs inform this August Assembly what his ministry is doing to ensure that Gambians in the United States are protected from police brutality and abuse? Thank you. Honorable Speaker, the matter of police brutality especially in the United States, have acclaimed global condemnation these past weeks. And we have all seen the competent U.S. authorities not only putting on trial perpetrators of police brutality, but also taking measures at various levels to put in place reforms in the policing system in the United States. As far as Gambian nationals are concerned, our diplomatic outposts have been mandated to always proffer advice and caution to our nationals to be law-abiding, not only in the United States, but in other places around the globe where they reside. Gambian nationals are always encouraged to register at the various diplomatic missions. And where these do not exist, at the various honorary consulates so that authorities are aware of their presence and as such can intercede on their behalf with local authorities when they are aggrieved. But generally, the message to them, wherever they may be, is to always remain law-abiding. Uh, ask supplementary questions. You can have yes. two. Yes, please. I think it's very generic. Uh, my question was, what, I mean, I want something specific. What have they done specifically to ensure? Because this has been, uh, this has been happening consistently. What specifically have they done or are they planning on doing? 
But I think I made it clear that one, one of the first advice you have to do as Gambian when you are, that we have to give to Gambian residing abroad is to register with the embassy and to be law abiding. But in the event that you have problems with the police, then the embassy can intercede in your favor. And we have seen cases where uh, we have Gambians who are residing in those countries taking responsibility and even uh, defending them pro bono. But as far as even here in the Gambia, you have to tell people to be law abiding. But what can you do apart from that in a foreign land where you have to you are subjected to the laws of the domestic laws of those countries? Madam Speaker, I think I am still waiting. It's like protecting. How is the American government going to protect those people? That is something that I wanted to know. How are they protecting them, just like they are protecting their own citizens? Well, I, I think it's the responsibility of any country where people are residing, if they are legal residents, they are under the protection of that country. And the police is there for all of them. If you are victim of anything, you can lay your complaint. That you can recourse to the uh, legal system to for, to make sure that justice is uh, done and you, your rights are respected. So, I, if you have any other suggestion, also you can give it to me. But I don't see anything that we can do apart from that. Supplementary questions? No? Everybody is comfortable? I think I know the reason. Question number 137 of 2020, Honorable Member for Lower Nyumi. Uh, Madam Speaker, once again, thank you very much. I wish to withdraw this question given that events have overtaken this question. Thank you very much. Question number 138 of 2020 by the Honorable Member for Banyul North has given authority to Wuli East for him to read the question. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, would the Honorable Minister for Foreign Affairs indicate to this August Assembly how many Gambians abroad are reported dead or infected by COVID-19 and what measures are being taken to protect and support them, especially those going to, this, going to school? Thank you. Honorable Speaker, so far information relayed by our missions abroad indicated that two elderly women of Gambian nationality passed away in New York due to COVID-19 and were led to rest there. Furthermore, we were also informed that there were a few Gambians in North Carolina who displayed mild symptoms of COVID-19 but subsequently recovered. Our missions are in constant touch with the various Gambian associations abroad for updates on the COVID-19 situation. It may also please this August Assembly to note, that, to note that government has been rolling our relief packages for Gambian students studying abroad through the Ministries of Finance and Economic Affairs and that of Higher Education, Research, Science and Technology. These sums of money directly remitted to the students are meant to assist them to buy food, medicine where needed and other essentials. Yes, uh, Honorable Speaker, I'm not sure. Is, are you aware that uh, students, Gambian students in, say, countries like Ghana, are complaining that they have not received uh, any support uh, from the Gambia, as promised uh, in the media? They've, they've been here in the media. Have you, are you aware of that? And uh, if so, uh, what is the situation with uh, students in, in Africa, generally? 
Not only in Ghana, but in, all, in several places, we've received complaints from the Gambians. But as I told the minister, the money, we provided the list of Gambians studying there. But the whole operation is handled by the Minister of Finance and Economic Affairs and the Minister of Higher Education. Just recently, one of our ambassadors, the one not to name him in, the, in Nigeria, our High Commissioner, was telling me that they have a list of over uh, more than 50 names that were sent, more than that. But actually, they sent only a few names, and they did not know what type of criteria they used to remit money for those ones. But uh, I'm sure during our COVID task force meeting, these are issues that we will raise so that we make sure that all Gambians are treated equally and fairly. I'm withdrawing the question, sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Could this House be privileged to know how much is being remitted to individual students? Well, I sincerely don't know exactly how much the Ministry of Higher Education, maybe you have information? My permanent secretary is telling me $300 per student. My question is um, related to that of uh, Willie East. Um, specifically, um, students that are within Europe, especially Great Britain, are you aware of any of them receiving any amount to this? We are yet to get any feedback from the Minister of Higher Education, and I will certainly contact my, the High Commission in London to know whether they've received money. But I know there are a lot of complaints. Yeah. But we know the money we had to handle at the beginning of the COVID-19 was the students in China. That was entirely handled in Wuhan area, handled by the foreign ministry, and they all received their money. And in fact, they received more than uh, 300, if my memory serves me well. Each of them received 500. All you do? I thought you said you would do the oh, I, I, I think I get my question back. Honorable Minister, can you categorize the, the students that have received this support from the, the government of the Gambia? Are we only talking about those on the sponsorship or both categories? I think the decision was to give it to all the students, irrespective of the fact that they are scholarship holders or they are self-sponsored students. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker, for giving me the opportunity. Honorable Minister, I think the emphasis is put on the on those going to school. But like what help is rendered to those who are not going to school and are staying abroad, especially those standing there. Well, here we are dealing with the students. We know our capacity as a government. And we know that we cannot take care of all the Gambians who are stranded abroad. We would have wished to do that, but we don't have the means. And when you don't have the, I always say that when you don't have the uh, means of your policy, you practice the policy of your means. And as the Latin saying goes, you cannot give what you don't have. And if you promise that we are going to take care of all the Gambians, we have, we've received such kind of cases. Some have written to the ministry saying that they went to a particular country looking for a job, but they are stranded there, and they want us to help them. Even my humble self will receive letters from even Gambians who are stranded here, who are asking me to pay for their ticket to go back to Europe. But we don't have a budget line for that, and I'm not rich enough to be able to pay for all of those who are stranded here. And we have also a particular situation where uh, you I mean, the embassies, they need to make sure that those who are receiving the money are students. And sometimes when they ask for them to provide papers, that's a big challenge. And we have seen situations where students are also asking 
the embassies, not to give them all the money, but to send half of the money to their parents here in the Gambia, which is a laudable uh, gesture, but we all know that we are not transfer bureaus and it, it, it will be very challenging. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Minister, there are a lot of Gambian students in Uganda. Do they enjoy this facility? Well, as long as we receive their list, they are supposed to enjoy the facilities. Because what our responsibility was to compile the list and hand it, and had, hand it over to the Minister of uh, uh, Higher Education, Research, Science and Technology. And they were the ones working closely with the Minister of Finance. And I think it's a good thing because they can compare notes, see what they have in their database and what we are providing. Supplementary. Thank you. Um, question number 139 of 2020, Honorable Member for Kiang East. Pardon? Kiang East? No? Okay, very well. And uh, we don't have any communication from him. Then we move over to number question number 140 of 2020 by the Honorable Member for Iliasa. Yes, thank okay, you. thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I have this similar question with the Bushumbala, but I've read it. Honorable Speaker, can the Minister of, fin uh, Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs Inform this August Assembly, the position of the Gambia government on the side of uh, Somalia land being recognized as a, sovereign, as a sovereign state by international community. Thank you. Honorable Speaker, the government of the Gambia has only granted recognition to the, Repub the Federal Republic of Somalia. Huh? Do I? It's the same question. <laughs> and I'm going to provide the same answer. Thank you. And on that note, I think we've come to the end of the question and answer session for today. The session is still on, please, honorable members. Um, I thank the honorable Minister for Foreign Affairs, International Cooperation, and Gambians abroad for the answers provided to this August Assembly. Honorable Minister, thank you. Honorable members, thank you very much. Honorable Member for Serekunda West, thank you very much for staying with us. <laughs> you can, you can, are you released? Is he the only person that you should tell? I know. All of us are here. Somebody going to. It's expensive. Yeah. You own it.